Hi Thorn Apple, I'm Pastor Andrew and I am so excited to share God's vision for our church with you. We've been looking forward to this moment for a long time and I believe it's been worth the wait. But things may not look exactly like you were expecting. When I think of a church's vision, my mind goes to vision statements. Maybe that's where your mind goes too. However, this isn't a vision statement, it's a visionary state of mind. What we have is a visionary plan, a process to help us fulfill our vision. This is a living, breathing document that will continue to change as we move forward. To be clear, our previous vision served us well. However, we're entering a new phase and we need a new vision to serve our current and future needs and frankly, become who we're supposed to be in serving the full measure of the gospel. We want you to use your imagination as you hear sort of this vivid description of where God's taking Thornapple. We wonder, what would it look like to be a church that names Jesus above all other names? A church that pledges its allegiance to the one who hung on a cross so that we might be reconciled across all human divides. When you look at stained glass up close, it doesn't look like much. When you step back and see the colorful pieces all together, the real beauty shines through and the complete picture is revealed. Over the next three to five years, Thorn Apple will invite the Spirit of God to shine out through our broken pieces, creating a beautiful image of who God is for our neighbors in Cascade and beyond to experience for themselves. We anticipate seeing people in our community bring their broken pieces and add them to the masterpiece God's creating at Thorn Apple. They will find a spiritual home here because of our particular vision of being centered on Jesus. Our neighbors will want to be part of this joyful and grateful church where God makes beauty out of brokenness. The original purpose of stained glass was, was not to be purely decorative. It told the stories of the Bible to those who were illiterate or could not afford their own copies of scripture. It visually spread the good news to those who didn't know Jesus. It drew them in and it invited them to know God and belong in this church. Jesus is the key to holding together our diverse, unique pieces of broken glass and healing the fissures that keep us separated from one another. With our eyes fixed on Jesus, the founder and finisher of our faith, everything else sort of fades to the periphery. The power of the Holy Spirit shining through us will bear witness to the one who has brought us together and who welcomes all to saving faith in Jesus. Our current cultural forces seek to divide at every turn, even among those who claim to follow Jesus. We own our part in this polarization and turn to God in repentance, asking him to smooth out the jagged edges of our past. By recentering all of our lives on Jesus, we hope to reacquaint our community with him. He wants to transform their lives and relationships, not simply modify their behaviors, just as he's doing with ours. Now is the time to take our broken pieces and offer them up to God, our masterful craftsmen, so he can redeem them and through them bring rejuvenation and wholeness to our tired and worn out world. For stained glass windows to be made, intentional scoring and breaking often needs to occur. Thornapple will acknowledge our grief, process our losses, and tell a fuller truth about who we are. We are inviting a season of lament for our church body trusting we have a lot to learn about the darkness in our lives and bringing it all before God. We anticipate God's restoration and healing will result in examples of how God's transformed us. This will enable us to tell our story to our neighbors as a testament to God's love and redemption. We seek to trust God in new ways and lean more heavily on the Holy Spirit as we take this journey together. The vision for this chapter of Thornapple's life is both similar to and different from the past. It's still all about Jesus and our place in the kingdom of God in Cascade. But we've turned in on ourselves and made Thornapple mostly about us, which is totally normal for a church of our age. And we notice a number of our hurts, divisions, and distractions flow from how our lesser loyalties have diluted and distracted us from our ultimate allegiance to Jesus, which is also totally normal for American churches right now. This vision addresses a real problem in our world, broken people in broken relationships. People are divided over all sorts of things and God specializes in bringing broken things back together again. So this vision calls Thornapple to repentance, to lament, to be healed by the power of God and to participate in God reuniting things that have been severed, especially relationships. 
This restorative work of God is not just for us. God intends it to overflow to our neighbors. This particular means of grace is something we pray will draw them towards God and help them find new life in Christ. It is a call to reorder our lives again. So easy to say, but incredibly demanding. This vision calls for more surrender and sacrifice of our likes and our lives because of our allegiance to Jesus and the kingdom of God. It acknowledges our humanity. We are broken and God's desire to help turn that into something beautiful. This vision requires humility. It is ultimately a vision full of hope. Here's the Beyond the Horizon vision. This is where God's taking Thornapple over the next three to five years. We call it from broken to beautiful. It's the future picture of our church. We summarize it saying, Thornapple will be a refreshing oasis for our community, authentically and wholly centered on Jesus in order to show our neighbors that God is for them and provides healing for the hurt, division, and grief in our world. This is the background vision. It looks a little different, right? The horizon includes strategic priorities we need to pursue in the next one to three years to reach the Beyond the Horizon vision. Let's take a look at all four of them. Ministry review. Our goal is to evaluate all that we're doing and decide to sustain, stop, or shift everything we do so as to advance us toward the vision by the end of 2023. Crucial conversations. We will learn to be comfortable with diversity while still centered on Jesus to see difference as something good, and to learn how to engage in conflict that brings people closer together in the healing power of God. Catalytic vision. We will grow and advance as a church because of excitement from the vision of where God's taking us, rather than the place, the personalities, the programs, or the people. Asset stewardship. We will decide what to do with the burden lots and the facility improvements of always making room phase two by the end of 2024. Now let's see the mid-ground vision. This is what we keep our collective church eyes on for the upcoming year. This piece of vision is a big step in moving us to where God is taking us. It affords simplicity and focus of our attention, our prayers, and our resources. And it allows us to celebrate and give thanks for the work. Okay, here it is. Jesus talked about the kingdom of God more than anything else. It is a beautiful reality where the world is exactly as it should be, with God's will fully reigning. Jesus admonishes his disciples to pray for this reality to come in fullness on the earth. But we know this is not the way things are, as we look inward at our hearts and outward at the world around us. In order to become more aware of the present gap between heaven and earth, we will study loss and practice lament in the year ahead. Lament is longing for the judgment of God's justice to be done on earth as in heaven. At least monthly, we will have a service, seminar, or study on the various components of loss and lament. By May 2023, we will invite everyone to bring the grief, anger, and pain that they currently carry before God and each other. Together, we'll assemble an artistic symbolization of the spiritual reality that God's doing in taking our brokenness and redeeming it into something beautiful. As God heals the fragments of our earthly lives, we will catch a new glimpse of heaven coming to earth. If you're wondering about lament, know that a third of the Psalms fit this category. Lament is not fatalism, complaining, or sulking. It's the biblical way of naming that gap between heaven and earth. We get to tell the truth about the brokenness and ask God how long until you do something about it. Lament is not something I'm highly familiar with, but I do look forward to learning this part of our Christian faith. And now, the foreground vision. Those of you who are ready to move, this is for you. These are specific initiatives that must be started within 90 days or so. These are the four most important immediate actions towards completing the mid-ground vision and are reviewed regularly. Now, let me show you how this living and breathing visionary plan works. Here you see the four action initiatives of the foreground vision. The first two, leadership engagement and a communication plan, have already been completed, praise God. As initiatives are completed, they are replaced by new ones. So at this time, the foreground vision involves congregational engagement, this video is a part of that, a first service of lament, a vision sermon series, and holy history sharing. This is a way of making sense of the last chapters of Thornapple's history that have left many of us disoriented. 
All four horizons make up Thornapple's visionary plan. It strikes the right balance of visionary and strategic thinking based on a visionary mindset. If it feels like a lot, good. This vision requires us to trust God in new ways. Are you feeling excited and scared? Good, me too. Hundreds of hours of work have gone into receiving and communicating this vision. It's not generic. It's not copied from anyone else's playbook. We had to wrestle with God and with each other to accurately discern God's vision for Thornapple. We did the work prayerfully, knowing that as the Holy Spirit was revealing the vision, the Spirit was simultaneously preparing us to pursue it. After a year of praying and waiting to address Thornapple's need for clear vision, we took the first big step in January. Thornapple's visioning team of nine members, plus our consultant, spent two full days together. Through the process, we went deep into Thornapple's history, our areas of gifting, our location in Cascade, and asked God to show us what He's doing here, past and future. During the visioning weekend, there were many times of confusion and disorientation. I left the first day feeling discouraged. I came back the next day, and during our discussion, I was hesitant about sharing an idea that I thought was different from where the rest of the group was. But Laura encouraged me to share, and I am certain that this nudging was of the Holy Spirit. That idea was the starting point for where we ended up, that Thornapple could be so radically united in proclaiming Jesus as our only hope that it would be obvious to the divided world around us and grow his church in the process. God blessed our visioning team by leading and guiding us to the vision we decided on, the vision he gave us. It was a Holy Spirit moment shared by each of us and was truly holy ground. I felt excited, amazed, and energized about what God had revealed to us and for the future of Thornapple. It is no secret to any of us that the church in America is in decline. The world we live in seeks to divide us over everything, assigning us to factions and trying to push us to one side or the other with little room for discussion in the middle. Thorn Apple's not immune to this trend. We have seen our own membership decline considerably over the last five years. Through our visioning process, the team came to realize that the needed renovation of the American church starts with us. We can't change negative national trends much, but we can get to work right here where we are. We hope to give people a beautiful picture of Christ's church in Cascade. I am very excited about this vision. I am excited to see it lived out in every area of our church, in every ministry, and by every age group. As a relatively new member, I'm excited about this vision because I really believe that it reflects the momentum of what my husband and I felt that God was at work doing here when we started attending two and a half years ago. I'm excited for the next few years of growth and change as we pledge our allegiance only to the one who hung on a cross to reconcile us all. And I'm so excited to feel excited. I'm excited that with this vision, God meets us in our need, but it's not really about us. As our broken lives and relationships are healed by the power of God, we increase our witness to our neighbors since the power of God is for everyone. With this visionary plan, we will know what we are doing, why we are doing it, how we are doing it, and know when we are being successful. Let's do this. <laughs>